Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. This is Noel, and today I'm gonna to be taking you through how to set up your very own Arc Survival Evolved server on Nitrado. I'm gonna be doing an entire series on servers, starting with how to create your server, followed up with how to change and alter specific things about your server in future videos. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing these, and while you're at it, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below if you enjoy the video or have any questions. Now to get started, we're gonna head over to the Nitrado website, and here you're gonna be able to purchase a server of your own for either PC or PS4. However, if you're an Xbox server or player, you will have to do this through the Microsoft's Nitrado app, which I will go over shortly. So from here, you're gonna to wanna to go to the products, game server, and that's gonna bring you to this screen here. From here, you're just gonna choose Arc Survival Evolved. In this case, we'll just choose PC. And then it's going to take you to this pick offer screen. Um, you're gonna be able to choose here how many um, slots you need for your map. Dodo, 10 slots, Raptor, 16, Rex is 32. And then you can choose a custom amount if you want. Just go ahead and click one. From here, they're gonna want you to run a latency test. You can skip this if you want to, but just go ahead and run that test. Essentially, all this latency test is really gonna do is it's going to run a quick server check to kind of determine what the closest server to you is. And this is going to mitigate uh, latency as well as reduce like ping for your server, things like that. For me, I live in the central US, so it almost always chooses New York City. So that'll pop up once that chooses or once it shows you what your recommended um, Location is you can either choose the location it recommends or a different one if you'd like to and then you will just go ahead and click on that next button Once you do that, it's gonna want you to sign up and then choose the uh, The ways to pay etc. So from there you're just gonna want to move on to the next part Which for me is going to be showing you guys how to set up your servers through a, an Xbox So you're gonna want to go to the Microsoft Store and You're gonna want to search for the Nitrado app and then you're just gonna wanna download this here. I've already got it downloaded, so we're just gonna open it up real quick. This app is very slow in my personal opinion, so you kinda just gotta bear with it as it does its loading thing here, which is really annoying. There we go. So on the left-hand side here, you can see we've got Arc. It says Fjordr. This is just because it's the most recent map, but this does not mean you're choosing the Fjordr map, so don't worry. Um, again, it'll usually right here tell you to run your latency test. However, I've hooked up mine before, so it's just recommending New York. And then on the bottom here, you can choose how many slots you want for your map. Um, you just click and it'll scroll left or right as well. You can choose 10, 16, 20, 32, 50, 100, whatever you want, the amount of days, etc. And then you're just going to want to go ahead and click purchase, and then you're going to want to purchase the server for yourself. From there, though, you're going to want to pull up your Nitrado server or your Go back to this one and you're going to want to log in here and then on the login screen there's going to be a drop down that says um services you're going to want to click that and this is for all servers this is not just for xbox it's pc everybody this is how you're going to manage your servers so i'm going to skip ahead to mine so that we can just kind of avoid my account name and all my servers and things and go here and this is going to be your dashboard so from your dashboard what you're going to be doing is you can see what the server name is all servers are kind of just given a generic name by Nitrado right away, like ours right now is uh, Loose Mantis. And then it's gonna have your IP address, the players that are on the map, the current map that you're running, and the version as well. Here you'll also be able to see your CPU usage as well as your memory usage and you know player count. On the left-hand side here, you're gonna have all that information and this is gonna be really useful if you ever need Nitrado support because um, they're gonna ask you for your IP and your port and things like that. So that's where you're gonna be able to find that there. And then you're gonna have these tabs here, information, settings, and tools. This video, we're gonna be doing some very basic setup because this is gonna be part one of part two, or part one of two, basically. Um, so we're just gonna go into general. All right, and once this loads up for you guys, you're gonna see configure mode here. There's an expert, expert mode. This is my preferred utilization. Um, however, we're not gonna go over that in this video. I will do an expert mode setup for you guys in the future. But for today, we're just gonna be going over a basic setup, so not to confuse anybody. So on your base settings, you're gonna have server name here. This is gonna be where you choose your server name. For my servers, it's called The Void. If you guys want to join that, you can go ahead, just go on Xbox or Microsoft PC. Just go into the search bar for unofficial PC sessions and just type in The Void and our servers will pop up for you. Um, you, can you can also include like your rates and things here so to better advertise your server. So like five times harvest, um, 25 XP, 50 maturation, I don't know, whatever you wanna put in there, right? Um, so that people can see it and kind of get an idea of what your rates are and see if they wanna join it. You'll see most servers do this. It's an easy way to kind of show your rates without somebody having to join. 
message of the day. This is going to be the message that pops up anytime somebody joins your server. Um, this is kind of useful if you want to list a few of your server rules or maybe your Discord link, things like that. And then uh, message of the day duration is going to be how long it lasts in seconds. I personally would recommend like maybe 30 to 60, 60 seconds. This is going to allow them time to kind of set up their character and things without it being super annoying. Um, server password, you're going to want to put a password here if you want to keep your server private. You're going to want to give anybody you want access to your map this password so that they can join. Um, admin password, this is going to be your admin password so that you can go into your console and enable cheats. If you want to be able to use cheats, that's just how you're going to do that. Language, this will be the language for your map. Map name, this is going to be where you can choose which map you want for your server. And then restart cooldown. And then this, this will be helpful if um, you've got people on your servers so that they will get a message in game telling them, hey, server is gonna be shutting down in however long. So you guys can choose like however many seconds you want. I would recommend a minimum of like 120 seconds gives people about two minutes to get to their base, get themselves safe and put away before the map goes down on them. If you're gonna be making server changes and you don't have a lot of people on your servers, I'd recommend using this at zero for the time being, just so that you can get in and out of the map as quickly as possible to make the changes that you need to make. Gameplay log, this is only really relevant to the survival of the fittest, so you don't really need to worry about that. Active event is gonna be whatever event you have running on your map. Um, so this could be all the holiday events, things like that. There's a few more things you'll have to change besides just this drop down to actually get the events to be active. And I will go over that in a future video. New Year's event, this is the event at the end of the year that uh, Wildcard usually does. So you don't really need to mess with any of that. Optimized RAM usage is gonna be kind of useful if you have, um, like a heavy amount of users, a lot of dinos, things like that in your servers like I do. Um, but for the general use, you're probably not going to need to utilize that. I accidentally skipped over spectator password, but that is just going to be because I'm going to go over the spectator mode and things like that in a future video as well. Then we have the no anti mesh system. You can enable this if you want to, but it will kind of allow people to build into the mesh and have other meshing issues. So I wouldn't recommend it. Then the no anti mesh kill system. This is going to prevent people from dying if they get in the mesh. This is kind of helpful to prevent deaths, but it can also result in people getting stuck in the map or being able to take advantage of like certain glitches in the game as well. So again, I just usually leave it like the way that it is. Um, enable cryo sickness is going to allow you to enable or disable cryo sickness in your maps. Enable cryopod nerf. Again, you're going to, you know, just kind of disable or enable that nerf, which allows them to take damage or not after they've been thrown out. The nerf debuff duration. Uh, the higher the number this is, the longer that debuff lasts. Amount of damage reduced. Again, this is going to determine um, the amount of damage that is reduced. 0.01 means 99% of the damage is reduced. Use item dupe check. I would enable this unless you're running a Steam server because this can cause a few um, issues with Steam mods, so just be careful with that. Primitive Plus, this is gonna support the Primitive Plus DLC. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this simply because Wildcard has discontinued support for the uh, Primitive Plus DLC and it is very buggy and there's a lot of issues so you might have a lot of heavy setup to do to actually even get this mod to be operable at this point so I would not recommend that. Um, Crossplay, this is going to be useful if you are like myself running an Xbox server but you want to have PC players play on it so you would enable this to allow um, Microsoft players to be able to play on your servers. On Steam, this is going to be here if you want to be able to allow Epic Games players to play with you, but you will not be able to run mods if you have this enabled. So I would just use caution with that if you plan on using mods on Steam. And that's pretty much gonna be the, the setup for this video. I will be immediately creating a second part to this video for you guys to go over the remainder of all of the settings on this um, because there are a lot of them and I will be breaking down a lot of this in more detail in future videos. But in the next video, I'm just gonna kind of go over quick settings and things like that through this and then dig deeper into them in future set or in future videos. I just didn't want this video to be too long or anything. So I'm just going to make this part one and then we we're gonna make a part two to it to follow up on this. So if you guys wanna see that, um, it'll pretty much be a post at the same time. So just go ahead, head over there and watch that. I will link it in the cards as well as in the description. Um, if this video was helpful to you guys, please make sure to like it, subscribe, drop a comment down below if it was helpful to you or if you have any questions. I'm gonna be going over tons of videos on how to set up your Nitrado servers, change settings, things like that in the future. And I just really wanna do these to kind of help you guys out because I do run a large cluster and I get asked these questions a lot. So having these videos to reference people to is gonna kind of save me time on answering the same questions over and over again but if you guys have questions i can always make videos on them in the future for you and yeah so that's that for today's video um i love you guys i appreciate you all for being here i appreciate you all for subscribing watching viewing everything and i'll see you on the next one